So my first uh, piece of advice, if you're interested in becoming a distinguished lecturer, is to go out to the SBE website, find out about the nomination process and the tryouts, and then what's involved in being a distinguished lecturer. My second piece of advice would be to be very open about how long, when, and where you can travel to, and this opens up the whole world to you so you can travel. I basically traveled around the world in nine months three times. It was a, a very exciting time. You know, your colleagues have already recognized you as a subject matter expert in your field. Now you get to travel around the world and share your learning. So around the world, as they get ready to begin a new technology, you're able to shorten their learning curve for them and really enhance what they're going to be able to do in their project, something very similar to what you're doing. So you add value to what they're getting ready to do. You know, to you, it's a reward for a career of hard work. People recognize what it is that you have done and how meaningful it is. For the individual sections around the world, uh, in my case, I was talking about horizontal wells and other places around the world, they're not as experience in the horizontal wells. Everyone has done a few. So they're able to select a distinguished lecturer such that it is something that is important to their jobs. So when they select you, they've asked you to come and speak to them because you're going to share information that they have not had access to before. And learning is always, I say, more beneficial when it's personal. I'm able to share it with you as opposed to reading a paper or seeing a, a webinar. I get to do it one-on-one. -on -one. You get to ask me your question and I answer your question directly. The place that I've kept the most in contact with is Belarus. They invited me to come back and uh, spend four days there talking about coil tubing drill lights and horizontal wells. I've made friends there and we've invited them to come to the United States to observe a frack job here. And it is a completely different setup something they are not used to, so they're trying to get their visas so they can come to the United States and see us in action here.